You know you're built different when a simple tap from a shoulder from you spins someone's entire arm in a completely different direction. Zenoba is quite the character, I will say. Like, uh, the entire scene with him is just reminiscent of my boy Juice. If you remember my boy Beetlejuice from ReZero, same energy. Like, seriously. Like, the whole bending of the back scene with Zenoba, I was like, that, that literally looks like just my boy. Like, Sloth himself. It's just like... Everything about his antics, how crazy he was, how he was literally just fanboying over a figurine. I was like, everything about his character is just straight up, you know, what I would expect from, you know, Beetlejuice from ReZero. And I don't know if that was intentional or not, but regardless, it definitely gave me those vibes. And anything that reminds me of that said character, you know you're going to have a good episode on your hands. But to make things even better, though, the voice actor for Zenoba is the same voice actor that did Caster in Fate Zero. If you remember those iconic lines and scenes from Caster from Fate Zero, some of the most ominous and creepy lines I have ever personally heard from an anime, yeah, that same voice actor. And honestly, it fits. The crazy tone of the character, it fits perfectly. I think, you know, that voice actor or the voice actor for, you know, Beetlejuice would have been perfect for Zenoba just to really get his crazy antics out there. But uh, with that out of the way, I want to take a few moments to talk about something that this episode did that is extremely meta and kind of blew me away after I finished watching the episode. Apparently, that entire segment with, you know, Zenoba kind of fanboying on the figurine of Roxy and he's just dissecting everything about it and kind of the three different arms to just the mold that, you know, Roxy could not hide, just everything about that entire sequence. It was straight up an advertisement. Yeah, if you don't believe me, literally as soon as the episode came out, there was an ad by an official company. It's like, yeah, we got a Roxy figure coming. That is literally the exact same figure that was showcased throughout this episode of Mushoku Tensei. And I'm like, wow, what a meta level ad. Like, seriously, that is great product placement. And because it's like the way they were able to kind of shove that into the episode without anyone really kind of being aware of it until, let's say, you know, the episode was done, and then do it in such a way to where it kept the entire sequence engaging and hilarious and gave us a lot of detail about Sonoba as a character. He was literally just pushing an ad. That, that's literally what he was doing, and I find that just truly remarkable. Like, honestly, I give points just to this episode for that brilliant product placement, and it fits so well. Like, it doesn't feel out of the place. Like, let's say Pizza Hut and, you know, Code Geass, if you remember those memes. But, uh, anyways, let, let's, let's dive a little bit deeper. So, Zenoba, as a character, he's, uh, quite eccentric, I will say. Like, the way he acts overall, I feel like he is a danger. Like, I really do. Because, just, the way his character is described towards the end, he is a decapitating prince. Like, he loves to decapitate people, and at first you might think that he's someone that just likes to put someone on the guillotine and say off with their head, and that's what he does, but as the episode unravels more about his character, you see that his physical strength, he is literally capable of probably ripping someone's entire head off like nothing, and I think the entire sequence with Pax is a perfect showcasing of this for multiple reasons. For one, you know, even though it looked like, you know, he didn't have control over his strength, like when he tapped Pax's shoulder, and you saw, you know, Pax's arm bend in a completely different direction, it might seem like he was being foolish, or like he wasn't trying to control his strength whatsoever, but that's actually inaccurate. He has perfect control, because if he really didn't have control over his strength, when he was pulling Pax's head slowly, it, it would have killed him if he had no control. But it seemed like he had such great control on his power, he was able to slowly manipulate it to where Pax finally gave in. But on top of that, with the way he handled the figurine of Roxy was very delicate. For instance, he didn't have a lot of strength and a lot of pressure put in on the figure when he was maneuvering it and looking at it and all that, which just shows his delicate nature. So he is very dangerous. He is very capable of controlling his strength, but I feel because of just how his personality is and what we even saw from him, he would definitely be, you know, someone that would kill his own family. Like, it's definitely clear as day that it's not beneath him. By any means, he definitely would have gotten rid of Pax if, you know, let's say, 
Rudy would have said so. I, I really don't think he would have batted an eye to that. Like, that's just how his character looked to me. But on top of that as well, I feel like he's going to come back to be a great obstacle. Because, judging by the way the ending of the episode was done, it seems like he might not be joining Rudy's group. He could... But even though he's exiled, it seems like he's going somewhere else, and, you know, Rudy's kind of separating from him, and he's probably going to get very angry if he's separated from his master, and his overall personality might descend into what was happening with Rudy in the last episode with Pax. For instance, Pax was so overbearing, and he just was so driven by the lack of Roxy for two years that he went crazy, and I feel like that's kind of what, you know... Zenoba is. Zenoba, if he's separated from Rudy for a very long time and he doesn't get what he actually wants, he might be driven mad and separate everything from Rudy to have Rudy for himself. That's what I feel like his character is going to go down because of what this episode set up. I could be wrong there, but that is the general impression I got. But okay, let's uh, let's take a step back and let's talk about some other stuff. So one of the big things that I love about this episode is that whole Aisha stuff at the end of the episode with her, you know, just revealing that she knew it was Rudy the entire time. I feel like this is incredible for a variety of reasons because the last episode definitely keyed us in that she is very curious she's very smart and she is not someone that is necessarily like that will be like put a rug or wool over her eyes and she won't be able to see anything she knew it was rudy since the very beginning and the way she revealed it at the end when they were finally parting was a perfect way for aisha to test him to see what type of person he really was and the way he kind of talked back to her he's like hey look you know you shouldn't be saying that at your age these type of things it showed character development in rudy which i appreciate that it's nice to see that type of growth but also it showcases that you know i should get to see her brother in a different light and he wasn't let's say like a, a perverted person he actually was a genuinely good guy that is changing i do appreciate that a lot to take it further aisha she basically seems like she was aware of it since the very beginning and she was just always testing and seeing what her brother actually was and that little memento that gift she got at the end was truly just precious i think it's cute it's adorable and i hope we get more aisha in the future i really loved her character she is such an interesting contrast to norn from the previous episodes when we saw her with Paul, I like just the complete contrast of the characters. How Norn is just so shy and timid, and then you have, you know, Aisha that's very outgoing and she has a lot of curiosity. She reminds me a lot of Rudy in this new world, while, you know, you have Norn that reminds me a lot of Rudy in the previous world, for instance, being very shy and timid and not really saying what they need to say, but still having some aspects of the newer Rudy as well. But uh, let's actually talk about Aisha and her mom, Lilia, that actually teleported and the dangers of that. So, I think it was mentioned a long time ago. I could be wrong. I could be misremembering this. If I am, forgive me. But I believe when Rudy and Eris got teleported to the Demon Continent and uh, Rui saved them... I believe they were falling from the sky. I, I could be wrong there, but I believe I am right. They were falling from the sky, and I remember kind of making a brief comment about this. If you're to teleport in the middle of the sky, what happened to other people that could teleport? Like, if it was anyone that wasn't Rudy, you know, what would have happened? You know, they would have probably just hit the ground and it would have been over. They would have just been a puddle of tomato juice, basically. So, I do wonder how many people got teleported into the sky, but also people that got teleported maybe into the middle of the ocean. I mean, really, take a moment to think about this. What happened to Aisha and her mother in this episode? We got to find out that when the teleportation event happened, they were just teleported in the middle of a lake, underwater. And you, you just gotta take a step back and think about this for a second. Like, if that is indeed possible, it, there's a possibility that people got literally teleported to the bottom of the ocean. Imagine, like, being teleported, like, a hundred feet down in the ocean, and you, you don't even know what is up, what is down, what's left, and what's right. You literally are just in pitch black darkness, and you don't know what to do. That is the impression I got. I feel like there is a lot of individuals from the teleportation event that just straight up got warped into the middle of the ocean, which is just a frightening thing to think about. It's like, you don't just get potentially teleport in the sky, you don't get teleported in the middle of the lake, but you can get teleported maybe into the bottom of the ocean, and, like, at the very least, if you're teleported in the middle of the demon continent, you have, even if it's a slim chance, like a 0.001% chance, you still have a chance of survival, but in the ocean, you're not surviving, you're done, dead, so... 
I do think that was some interesting world building that this episode did. I, I feel like that was definitely crucial information, and I feel like maybe there's going to be some characters in the future that are not going to have some really good circumstances with the teleport. Like, I feel like some things like what Rudy's went through and Aisha and Paul and Norn and all of them is very small and easy in comparison to uh, other places. Like, I wonder where Sylphie went. I, I, I am concerned about that, and also where Zenith is at as well because it's like from what we have seen so far from the teleportations is that if you're holding on to someone you're able to teleport with them we've seen this with Eris and Rudy we've seen this with Norn and Paul and now we have seen it with Lilia and Aisha so when you think about that it's like every time someone has physical contact with another person they're teleported with them however Sylphie and Zenith were not holding on to anyone at all and that, that's the problem. That means that Sylphie teleported by herself somewhere randomly, and so did Zenith. And just judging by how anime normally goes with these type of things, I feel like Sylphie's gonna be okay. She's probably gonna go for a lot of bad stuff, but she's gonna be okay. But Zenith, I'm worried about. And hear me out. The reason why I say this is because when it comes to anime, manga, mother characters typically don't have a good ending. I just, I'm gonna keep it real. They usually don't have that type of ending, like a good ending. They usually pass away in some means. And I feel like Zenith is definitely gonna be one of those characters where she's going to probably die. And Rudy's gonna find out about that. Because, once again, I want to bring up that uh, you could potentially be teleported under the ocean. Like, in the ocean. And, like, what are you gonna do? You, th there's nothing you can do. So, it's a possibility. I, I feel like something has probably happened to Zenith with just all the secrecy around her and how Roxy herself is even trying to find her. That's just my personal impression. But yeah, overall, Mushiko Tensei this week was great as always. And, you know, I guess background art, as I always mention, is great too that we got to see at the beginning of the episode. It's just the series is always back to back great. I'm always having a good time with it, and there's really not much more I can ask for as a fan of the series. So, I uh, guess I'm going to leave it at that, though. It's a good episode. Can't wait to see where it's going to go next. Can't wait to see, you know, more character development from our characters, and I'm loving the character development we're getting from, like, Eris, from Rui, Rudy, and just, you know, all the cast. I, I really appreciate it. But, uh, okay, I'm going to leave it at that, though. Be safe, guys. Stay healthy. If you enjoy my content, you know, please subscribe. If you like this video, please leave a like. And with that, she be out.